Okay, right now I'm gonna put in a clip of a gorgeous flower arrangement that I got for my birthday from my friend Deanne in Austin. It's been about nine days since I got that arrangement and it had just seen better days and I just couldn't stand to throw it all away. So I have this little thing here that I start different ivy cuttings in and what I did is I just went through that arrangement and I pulled out some of the three things that were looking good. I threw out, I pulled out three daisies, three miniature roses and some greenery. And so this will last a couple of more days and look beautiful. Here's another one I did out of the same arrangement. I just got this tall glass and filled it with water. And we had this huge, I think those are Shasta daisies. I grabbed a couple carnations and some more greenery. So now I can keep enjoying this just right here on the kitchen island. And then here's the third thing. There were tons of tiger lilies in the arrangement. As you can see, it's a little wine glass and I just grabbed it out of the cabinet, put water in it, and I put all these tiger lilies in and put it in front of this, oh, you can see me, yuck. And put, you, put it in front of this mirror and you can see it just looks so pretty and I will be able to enjoy these probably for another four or five days. And so I just wanted to let you know, when you have a gorgeous arrangement, sometimes you don't have to get rid of it just because most of it is, is gone and dead. Just pull some stuff out of it and make some little miniature ones and you can enjoy your flowers even longer. Okay, per, per y'all's request, y'all wanted to see some cooking videos and I don't do the cooking anymore so I thought I would show you what we're having tonight because it's something different. Scott has bought us tuna steaks and he's covering them in sesame seeds and first he marinated them in what Scott? Uh, Kikaman, olive oil, honey, salt, pepper. Okay. I think that was pretty much all. And now he's putting them all, covering them in this um, sesame seeds. And then he's going to cook them on the grill. How long do you cook them? Two and a half to three minutes a side. In? Iron skillet. Iron skillet. A little, little bit of olive uh, oil. Okay. So we're excited. We've never done this before. And what we're going to have with it is I'm going to flash fry some green beans that I cleaned the other day in a hot skillet of olive oil and Montreal steak seasoning and flash fry them and they're ready in about five minutes and they're so so good you just don't cook them too long or they get soggy and that would be terrible and to go with it we're cheating today this is jalapeno cheese bread from a local grocery store here in, uh, this is actually in Florida, right over the border. Jalapeno cheese bread, and it is amazing. And so we're going to slice a couple of the two slices and toast and butter them to go with our tuna and our green beans. So that's gonna be an amazing dinner. Okay, here's the green beans. There's olive oil. I throw a little butter in there. You just stir them around. You cook them like two minutes, three minutes. And uh, they're still crunchy and they're so good. And I added some butter just for flavor. And the Mon Montreal steak seasoning. Okay. He's putting them on right now. He's got them on this side burner that we have. Um, next to our grill. Okay, Scott preheated the skillet, put olive oil in it, and he's had these, he's going to cook these steaks, tuna steaks, two and a half minutes per side, which is not very long, but um, we don't know if they're going to stick or what. All right, we'll see what happens. I'm going to go back in the house and finish the beans.
Okay, here's the finished meal, the jalapeno cheese bread, the green beans, and the salmon, I mean, tuna steaks. We just drove, we left church at, what time, Scott? Well, Almost 11. 11 yeah. yeah, we left church at 11, drove down the beach road to go to Pedro's the Mexican place. Unbelievable, every parking lot at every beach little spot packed. I've never seen it like this. Um, luckily we got in Pedro's. Anyway, and the water on both bridges was crazy. Or where did we see those other boots? Oh yeah, both bridges. The water was full of people. It's a holiday weekend. You can see the boats everywhere. That's where we were boating the other day when I said we we're on the Florida side. Sometimes Scott likes to go out and people watch and go out and all the mess. I don't like to boat when there's a million boats in the water, but. Okay, we're at the car wash. The car is so dirty. And it says, well now they messed up the thing. I can't see, it's something funny. Wall of foam, we're fixing to go into the wall of foam. Okay, here's the lights. I knew they had lights in here. Okay, y'all, that's where I get my hair done. Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, y'all, I just realized that you've heard, probably heard the music on the radio and think, what the heck? We're, we listen to sometimes 70s, 70s on 7, Channel 7, Sirius Radio. Okay, and they're playing Boogie Fever right now. But what I wanted to tell y'all is if you have Sirius Radio on Sunday mornings, they replay Wolfman Jack top 40 or top 100 countdown. Do y'all remember? Kasem. No, Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Wolfman, ja Wolfman Jack was at night. Yeah. yeah. Casey Kasem. Remember that, y'all? The countdown. Okay. It was 1978. May 20th. 20th. It was 10 days before I turned 18. I was hearing all the hits. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. Now, other thing I remember so well. And I bet I've shared this before, but just in case. On, a, on New Year's Eve of 1979, when it was going to be 1980, which we all thought was a huge deal. Huge deal. 1980, 1980. Okay. Because that sounded old, right? Because, you know, you heard about the book 1984 forever, and now it's it was going to be 1980. Okay. I'm in my bedroom, I had no plans. I was between high school and college. I was li living at home in the summer. It, no, I was there for vacation, Christmas vacation. Do you, do you know where you were at? I was at my mom's house, <coughs> my house I grew up in. <laughs> I was at the house I grew up in, okay. I'm up in my bedroom and I realized that they were doing the countdown of 1970s, all the 1970s, the countdown. And so I turned it on when it was at like 15. So I sat there and I was trying to predict, trying to predict what was gonna be next or whatever. And I was pretty good, you know, Fleetwood Mac, obviously. But I wanted Stairway to Heaven to be the number one uh, song of the decade. And when I didn't hear it in that last 14, I knew, I knew. And when it played, I'll just never forget the satisfaction I felt of my favorite song being number one. I mean, does it get any better than that? 